Susanna's right here. Can you see all of us? Yep. Look good? Do yep. look pretty? All right. Well, sorry. <laughs> that was a lit for you, Stace. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to our recruitment night here at Wave Volleyball. We're super excited that you came out Sunday night to join us. Hopefully you guys get a lot out of this and we wanna save plenty of time for questions at the end of the evening. So we're gonna spend about 45 minutes talking to you and I'm gonna introduce the panel to my left that I'm very excited about this year. My name is Brennan Dean, I'm the director at Wave Volleyball and my background is high school counselor. So I bring a lot of um, information about the NCAA process, so I'm gonna be speaking a lot about that. To my left is Kevin Hodge. Kevin Hodge is new at WAVE this year and he is our recruitment coordinator. Big round of applause for Kevin. And if Kevin doesn't brag about himself, I'll do it real quick. He has so many connections in the college community. It's one of the big reasons why we brought him down to WAVE is because we are putting a lot of resources into helping families and kids get into higher education. That is our, one of our top priorities at WAVE. Kristen Wright is next to Kevin. She is the head coach at Miracosta Junior College for the women's and the beach side. So we're very excited to have her join us for the second year again. Thank you, Kristen. And one of our WAVE coaches, Marie Zydek, who is also the assistant coach at University of San Diego, a Division I program. She's going to share a lot of knowledge about the recruiting process this evening. And our very own Mike Placek, who is our beach recruiting coordinator. So Kevin is our indoor recruiting coordinator. Mike is our beach recruiting coordinator, a new position that we created this year we're very excited about. He'll be speaking about the resources that we have available for our beach athletes as well. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. And our, another wave coach, John Scott. And John Scott is the Point Loma Nazarene head women's coach at Division II program. So we're excited to have all levels joining us tonight. And then our executive beach director, Matt Olson, who's gonna give you a big um, wide view of the beach college experience and what's going on currently at the NCAA level. So I'm gonna begin, yes, sorry man, give me the talk to your so we have this packet, we're not gonna go through the entire thing, um, but we wanna give you guys a lot of resources. We're eventually gonna get this stuff online in the next week or two, but uh, feel free to, go through all of this and reference it throughout the presentation and later on. And what I want to bring to the table right off the bat, and I hope you take a minute to absorb this, the most important thing in the recruiting process is going to be your academics. The most important thing is going to be your grades and your GPA. That needs to be the number one priority for all of you student athletes. If you guys are able to keep a high GPA, you are gonna have many, many more doors open to you. So it is important that that is the first priority when you're looking at the recruitment process, when you're approaching volleyball, when you're approaching what you're gonna do after high school, please keep that at the forefront of your mind. Keep your GPA high, okay? So you can see here through the grade expectations, um, you know, recommendations of what you should be doing in ninth and 10th grade. Something that's very important to understand is that as a college athlete, you will have three requirements that you will meet, and these are broad. The first one is you need to graduate from high school. So you need to understand your school district's graduation requirements. You can sit down with your high school counselor and make sure that you're meeting all of those requirements. The second thing that you need to do as a high school athlete becoming a college athlete is get into college. And there is a new group of expectations that you're going to need with your coursework. So you might have some science classes that you can take in order to graduate, but then there's lab sciences that are gonna be required in order to apply and be eligible for colleges and four-year universities. So you're therefore going to need to meet the college eligibility requirements. And then the third, 
And what most people forget is then there's the NCAA requirements. So you must meet the high school graduation requirements, the college eligibility requirements, and then the requirements by the NCAA to be able to play at the Division I level. And there are 16 core classes that you can see on the second page of your packet that you will need to meet in order to play at the Division I, II, III level. So make sure that you sit down with your high school counselor or if you're tech savvy, go onto the NCAA website and make sure that the courses that you're taking that you think are going to be NCAA core classes meet the actual requirements. Because those courses that you're taking may or may not be accepted. And it's very important that you sit down and you double check with your counselor. If you have trouble for whatever reason working with your counselor, that is why I am here. I am happy to sit down with anyone with their high school transcript. I can jump on their high school website and the NCAA website. We can highlight the classes and we can make sure that you're meeting all three of those requirements. Next, you have the sliding scale. So with the NCAA, they have a GPA that you must meet with a sliding scale of an SAT or ACT score. So the higher your GPA is, the lower your SAT or ACT score can be. And you can see that sliding scale right here on this page. And some explanations of the NCAA eligibility um, process on the following page. It's important that in your junior year that you sign up for the NCAA Clearinghouse. They'll give you a PIN number and you'll input the courses that you've already completed and they'll start tracking you and it'll make it so that you'll be eligible for official visits your senior year. But that's not something that you want to wait until you've already talked to colleges. It's good to jump on that. You can even do it your freshman year if you want to, but you'll need to update it, especially in your junior year. So if you haven't done it yet, it's not a big deal. There's still plenty of time, but it is a good idea to get on there, especially if you're juniors, NCAA Clearinghouse and set up an account there and it'll walk you through all sorts of different terms and things to understand that can be very confusing. And Kevin spent a lot of time putting this packet together and I think he did a great job with just the, the terms in here. He has a couple of pages starting on page five of you know, what is a contact period? What is the season of competition? What does it mean to be a red shirt or a gray shirt? Um, obviously, I'm not gonna read through all of these pages, but feel free to take a look. So like I shared with you, the beginning of the presentation is that at WAVE, we have, over the last three years, really shifted our resources into recruitment. And we've hired a lot of new staff members to make sure that we're meeting all of our kids' needs to give them the best opportunity to choose the college of their dreams to go to. So one thing new is Jimmy Lundgren, who is actually John Scott's assistant at Point Loma Nazarene. He's a new coach at WAVE as well. We just recruited him to come over and join us. And Matt and I are both really excited because when Matt and I were sitting down and going through the interview process with Jimmy, and Jimmy unfortunately can't be here because um, of some prior commitment, but he wanted to be. But Matt and I were excited because Matt and I both hired him to make recruitment videos and highlight videos for our beach and our indoor athletes. So if you look at the very last page of this packet, we had Jimmy put together a nice little one pager about the video editing services that come complimentary of being a part of WAVE. And for all of our 16 and older athletes that are in the indoor program, Jimmy will work with you if you connect with him. So you'll initiate, and there's step-by-steps -steps of how to do that in here. And he will sit down, and you guys can rent a court, and he will put together a skills video that we can put online, and we can send off to colleges. I'm gonna have Kevin and Marie talk more about the emails that are gonna be sent out. And then also you'll see on the right-hand side, the Wave Beach Volleyball. So there'll be a complimentary highlight video, different from the skills video, a highlight video of actual match play, um, that's going to be available for our Wave Beach athletes and you can see who qualifies that the second paragraph down. So that's just one of the resources that I wanted to touch on before I pass it over to Kevin, our recruiting coordinator. Kevin? Um, Mike? No. I'm not a microphone guy, I'm not a podium guy. Um, for those of you that I've talked to before, I move around, I look around, I'm a bit of a shaker. Um, 
so I thought I'd just be me up here. Um, first, Brennan announced everybody here. I'd like to give it up for Brennan, actually, for, for putting this all together. And not just tonight, um, but this entire thing, this entire big family that we have uh, that's Wave. Um, I met Brennan three years ago, and uh, that's when he was courting me, I guess you could say. And the timing was never right. Um, but we would have conversations, or he'd say, hey, do you have a minute or whatever? And he, I think he noticed that I was always, at these tournaments, I was always talking to college coaches. And I'd go, yeah, I'll have a minute in a minute. And uh, it, he kept tabs on me, and, and last year rolled around, and he called me, and he said, hey, the moons are about to align here, and let's make this happen. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm extremely thankful for Brendan. Um, I'm extremely thankful for Wave that, um, that, that he's allowed this and, and, and that I get to do what I get to do. Uh, I started coaching probably 12 years ago, and it was all about the coaching. I was fresh, fresh out of playing, and all of a sudden I realized at these tournaments when I had some pretty special athletes on my team, and I see a lot of them in this room tonight, that I got to interact with these college coaches. And for me, it was something that was just as exciting as getting a win. And I would hang around. And I made sure that I was talking to coaches about kids that I didn't even coach from other teams within my club, and it just became something that I wanted to do all the time. So when we go to these big tournaments and you guys see me, um, You'll see me losing my mind on the sideline with my kids, and then afterwards you'll see me chatting it up as much as possible with all these coaches. Um, because the biggest thing for me is we're not going to remember these wins and losses, but if these kids get to play beyond wave, that's what really gets me fired up. And that was the first thing Brennan asked me in the interview. What fires you up? And I love to win and I hate to lose and all that kind of stuff, but to see these kids get to extend their playing time and to see all this hard work and time and effort and money that you guys put into club volleyball pay off into college is my favorite thing. Um, as far as my role, it's going to be very individual to your child and your family and what you want. And we're going to sit down and we're going to come up with a plan specifically for your kid. This isn't all written down. There's, it, it's not scripted. Okay, because your kid is unique and your kid is different from everybody and maybe they know what they want to do, maybe they don't know what they want to do, but we're going to still find a way. Okay, so I like to refer to it as the funnel. All right, I don't know what I want to major in or I'm going to be a doctor and we're going to find these schools that they're interested in and we're going to figure out what your kid likes because it's all about them and we're going to go through this process of narrowing it down. And I'd be lying if I said it wasn't stressful. Um, but I really, I've seen it before. These coaches have all seen it before. It's exciting. And it's exciting because we've seen it happen before. Now, for you guys, it's going to be a little bit stressful, but let's, let's side on exciting. Um, I want to leave a lot up to your kids, OK? Uh, I'm here to help. All these coaches are here to help, but it's definitely not a hand-holding process. If your kid is motivated, and this is what they want to do, then I'm in the passenger seat and, and we're going full speed ahead or we're going at the pace that your child chooses, okay? Uh, I won't play tug of war with it. But if they're motivated, I'll match it and we'll get rolling and, and we'll find out where they need to be. Um, so they're leading the charge, really. Now parents, you're gonna to wanna to send emails for them and all that kind of stuff. I beg you not to. Okay, I think it's just your kid going to college and not you, as much as we all want to go back. Um, so let's make sure that we're giving them the reins a little bit, just like we talk about talking with their own club coaches. Um, I'm available a lot. I finally moved down here, so now I can't escape anything. Um, that new beautiful tent that is going to be up soon, I have my own office. I will be in there. The doors will be open. I want you guys to bother me. I want any little question that you have, I want you to fire away. Um, I want you just to show up and surprise me, I don't care, because like I said, I get to 
wake up and go do something that I love and it's super, super exciting to me. So um, we will set times together and we'll sit down and, and I've already sat with a bunch of you in here in the first one, you know, the first one we're gonna sit down for 45 minutes and we're gonna work it out. And you're gonna have a million questions and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you be uh, the firing range there because we've gotta figure it out. Um, but I would like some sort of plan from you, more importantly from your child, as to what they like, what they don't like. And that's how we're gonna figure this all out. But my email, my phone number, it is okay to text me, to call me whenever you are never bothering me. My wife fully understands that this is what I love and I love her a little bit more, but she knows that this is what I love to do. So if it's 10.30 at night and you're not bothering me, it's really, really cool because I've, I've seen what happens at the end and I've seen all that stress go away and I've seen that celebration and for us to be a little part of it is very, very rewarding to me. So I'm expecting after this that my email inbox is gonna blow up because you guys have to take the first step. Um, I'm around the gym plenty but I don't read mine so girls, I'm not gonna walk up to you and say, hey, so what do you wanna do? It is up to you. If it's something you want, you're going to get it. Okay, um, and you're gonna see me in these meetings get more and more fired up as we do this. Um, I don't think they do this a lot at other clubs and not that I'm bashing them, I just think what we've got going on here is really, really special. And to even go beyond that, um, for our high school age girls, on April 1st we are offering a college coaches combine where it'll be run by Wave Coaches, but it is an open invitation to any college that wants to show up, and we're gonna put the girls through workouts, and it's going to be free, because it just should be. And we wanna be able to highlight our club, and we wanna be able to highlight these girls, and, and we just want them to have every and any chance possible um, to get this opportunity to play at the next level. There's a lot of good volleyball players up here right now that got a chance to do that and they know all about it and it's, it's one of the coolest things and, and, and I want that for anybody uh, who wants it for themselves. So we are going to be offering that uh, on the beach side and on the indoor side in one day and we just want to pack the gym and we want to make it great and we want, I, I want those coaches blowing up my inbox as well. Um, if you see me at a tournament and you see a school that's there that your kid is interested in, I will go talk to them flat out. There's a lot of rules behind all that stuff and I'll, and I'll let some of the other coaches talk about that, but I do not mind harassing coaches. I know them well enough that if they don't like me, that's okay. Um, but I have a pretty good relationship with a lot of these people. So I have no issue with reaching out bothering them, whatever, but it's got to come from you girls. So, like I said, I am fully available. I'll be here for the Q&A. I will hang out afterwards if you guys want to start talking about this kind of stuff. I will be in there tomorrow and every day after that, and I'm planning on being around for a long time. Um, and, and I just think it's so cool, and I appreciate the fact that everybody's showing up tonight. So, uh, please come find me, and, uh, and let's get this all started. Thanks. He told me earlier that he wasn't very good at public speaking. Uh, that was pretty darn good. <laughs> uh, I am going to use the mic. My name is Matt Olson. Uh, I run the beach program here at Wave. Uh, Mike Blachek has been with us for a couple of years, but we recently promoted him to the coordinator of recruiting, which Brian shared, which is great. Um, Kevin's the April 1st, correct? We're going to have a beach version of that as well at the new courts, which are supposed to be up and running on Monday, February 1st, which is super exciting. That's a tentative date at this point, as a, a few deadlines have been passed, but uh, it's looking pretty good. Sands going to be delivered on Wednesday. We're super excited. Uh, before I get going, I want a quick little round of applause for uh, Miss Liesl Kohler and Winslow Church. They're in the room tonight. A little round of applause for these two. They took third today in Huntington Beach with me. We all came directly from a tournament and jumped in a shower uh, with the hose and ran in here. So we all made it. So congratulations to you two. It was fun seeing you guys play well. 
Uh, I'm going to give you guys a quick overview on what the beach volleyball scene looks like in college. It is officially beach volleyball. It started as sand volleyball as far as the title when it was an emerging sport. It is the 90th NC2A women's sport and that happened in January 2015, officially beach volleyball, which is awesome. And Mike and I will both go some of the details of what uh, the programs look like and scholarships and all that fun stuff. But it is the 45th NC2A championship for women's volleyball and uh, it's super exciting. The guys are a little behind the curve on the beach volleyball stuff, but for the girls, it's an amazing opportunity. And it's going, who knows, like this, like that, whatever it might be, it's, it's going quick, and more and more institutions are jumping on board, and it's uh, extremely exciting to see. So I'm very fortunate that I'm involved. I love what I'm doing. I've been in Waves since 2006, I believe, and I've transitioned to beach only, as the term goes. So uh, I've been doing the beach stuff. You guys will see me at the three sand courts here and down at Dog Beach. North Beach, actually, is what they want us to call it, but North Dog Beach. Um, let's see. So lay the land for the college programs. If you guys flip through to this page, so I'm talking, you kind of get an idea if any of these schools interest you or are those of you that are here for beach volleyball specifics. There are 62 schools on this list, and there's four other uh, NAIA schools. And uh, this list has been... It gets updated every couple months, and every time it does, there's another 10 plus schools on it. And I know there's a couple on here that Mike might share that uh, we know are coming on it in the next list, which is exciting. Um, six full scholarships is the max that any one institution can have, and a lot do not have that at this point. A lot do, but a lot do not, and every program is a little different. So as far as some have six, some have two, some have two coming in 2017, they're all a little different, so the recruiting process for each school is different. Um, most, most are taking beach athletes. There are a few of these schools, maybe not so many of these, but some of the ones that are coming that are going to be starting with some of their indoor players only. So a lot of them share indoor players and beach players. So there's some schools that have indoor and beach, some schools that have beach only, and then there are some that are pretty much their first year only using their indoor players. Um, there's a couple, this is one thing you guys really want everyone to hear, is that if you go to a school on an indoor scholarship, you can play beach volleyball. However, if you go to a school on a beach scholarship, you cannot play indoor for that school. So I don't know if that's ever going to change, but right now that's the way the rule reads. So if you go somewhere to play indoor, you're welcome to play on the beach team if they have one and they want you to play. If you go there to play beach, you cannot play on the indoor team. So I just want everyone to be clear about that. Um, Brennan and I work together, we're partners on the beach, and we have a really cohesive situation with our indoor and beach players and it's great when a lot of the indoor players come out and uh, vice versa we see there's definitely some benefits to both for each surface pretty darn cool uh, the schools themselves most have 16 players approximately a lot of like 12 to 16 players they compete with 10 so it's similar to tennis where one school brings five teams another school brings five teams they pair off one plays one two plays two all the way down and it's the first school that gets three victories. It's match play. The first school that gets three victories wins the match. So it's pretty exciting. Um, it's a spring sport. And so during the season, they can play a minimum to be considered for the NCAA tournament, which is in May. They have to play a minimum of eight matches, or eight days of play is the way it's written. Um, 16 is the max. A lot of the schools that have fully funded programs are playing 16 days of competition. It is significantly smaller than the indoor side of things these days, but they're looking to extend the season a little bit on both ends because it's a lot of training throughout the fall. There's a lot of training through the spring and the season itself is pretty short. It concludes uh, this year, it's uh, May 6th through 8th and it's in Gulf Shores, Alabama of all places. And it'll actually be there again, May 5th through 7th in Gulf Shores, Alabama next year, 2017. But it's on the beach, which is great, and uh, again, it's just a lot of cool opportunities, and the fact that there's an NC2A championship now is just amazing. Um, the NC2A championship takes eight teams, four from the west, four from the east, and they go and they hatch it out, uh, same match play, same format. Um, let's see, a couple other things. Right now, I just want to give everyone a little situation. So we're down there in North Dog Beach, four or five days a week, depending on the week. And we practice 12 months a year, we take a couple breaks here and there, but for the most part we're practicing all the time. Tournaments are optional, and there are tournaments all the time. As you guys know, today is Sunday, January 24th, and we're up in Huntington playing a tournament. Right now, it's not like indoor, where the SEVA is like the governing body. There are actually nine tours that I'm aware of right now that are offering beach volleyball tournaments. 
Some of them have portable nets. Some of them have nice everything, but it's, it's kind of wild, wild west out there as far as that goes. And, uh, but there are nine, and I looked today earlier, there are three that have winter tour leagues throughout the season. There are, I think leagues is not the right word, there are three tours that are offering tournaments throughout the winter. There are two leagues currently in place. They're both pretty darn new, and we're going to be trying one actually next Sunday, 31st, for the first time in Carlsbad, which we're excited about. But there are leagues getting started. But all this, with all this movement, some of the stuff is still just getting sorted out. So it's a very interesting time on the beach, and we're extremely excited to be where we are and facility opening up, and hopefully we'll get a lot of kids into college. Um, we have nine current players that are committed to college. And again, Mike is my right hand helping with the coordinating, but I do a lot of the work. And I'm sure Kevin's going to get a lot of emails after his little speech, and I always get a lot of emails as well. And you guys know if you receive my emails, I'm a resource to you, and I, I would love to help during this process. Nothing more than for us to get the kids to the next level or where they want to be for that matter. And uh, if they're playing volleyball at that school, then wonderful. So um, that's what I got. I'm going to hand it off to Mike, and uh, thank you all for showing up. I'm hoping the football games are going well. Well, Matt touched base very well on most of it. A uh, couple of things I wanted to mention first of all. Um, if you guys go to right after the San Volleyball programs, you'll see a list of all the schools that have beach volleyball currently, and there's emails, <coughs> contacts, phone numbers. So we spent a lot of time getting this assembled. And um, beach volleyball right now is the fastest growing sport in college. So. Um, even last week, I just got confirmation the University of Utah is adding a spring program next year and going full on. So every program is a little bit different in, again, when they're going to start, how many scholarships they have. Uh, my job is if your daughter wants to go to one of these schools, I get on the phone and I call the college and see what the status is, uh, how many scholarships are available, what, you know, are they looking for a blocker or a defender, and just kind of get straight to the point and see. You. And like I said, every class is a little different. So, um, but my job is, like I said, I want to research. I've known through playing professionally with Matt, we've played a lot of these, you know, current coaches ourselves. So, um, it's pretty, like I said, just go along with Kevin. It's really fun for me to get on the phone and talk to him and catch up. So, um, so just to give you guys like a little information, schools like University of San Francisco and all of the northern schools towards Pacific Northwest, Northern California, sorry, they uh, will start having more and more beach-only kids, but Again, the college coaches that have some volunteer experience with beach can have kids do it year round. Otherwise, like I said, they're waiting for their indoor kids to come back. Um, sorry, one second. And, um, anyway, so. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. So, anyway, um, one big thing, and we'll touch up on this in a second, but. When you guys are going to send out emails, let's say if you want to send an email to Santa Clara University, uh, please first CC Matt and I what the email looks like. And after that, you guys will see that there's a template email. Um, sorry, I'm going through a lot of information, but can you guys please find that? So far, so good. So, um, again, a lot of the emails I've been helping with so far, there'll be little things that you want to make sure that every email is personalized. So, again, you're not a generic email, you're not copy-pasting, um, and make sure that you're doing your research as much as you can. And um, from there, like I said, once we approve it, then that's something we could send out. And... Um, uh, <coughs> Matt, you covered a lot of stuff I wanted to say, so I'm trying to catch up what's left. It's kind of going. Sorry about it. So um, from there, again, one other thing that uh, we recommend is there's a lot of tournaments Matt mentioned, but pardon me? tournaments, that's the tournaments we Yeah. So the Get Notice tournament, there's one February 7th. There's also a coaches clinic on February 6th. So I'm going to be going to that and assisting, but that's a chance where I think there's about 15 beach college coaches that will be there running a clinic, and. Um, it's a great chance for the kids to actually work with the coaches one-on-one, -on -one, see who they vibe well with, who they don't. And um, then the very next day is that tournament. And like I said, I think there's up to 20 college coaches there recruiting. So um, that's a great tournament. Um, 
And then a lot of the, like I said, USC, UCLA, a lot of them are having multiple camps a year now. So uh, Matt and I will get you guys information on all of those. Um, but again, that's a great chance for the kids one-on-one -on -one to try to uh, impress the coaches. And, um, and lastly, I know we touched on it a little bit, but Jimmy Lundgren um, is going to be doing those videos. So uh, please, if you guys have footage from any of the previous tournaments, uh, send it to him, send it to Matt and I, let us oversee everything as much as possible. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So I'm sorry, Matt took a lot of stuff I wanted to say, so I should prepare a little better. But uh, if you have questions, I'll be more prepared for the Q&A. So I apologize. Thanks. USD. I'm one of the assistants there. Um, the whole purpose of what I'm going to talk about tonight is, is give you the insight into a, uh, a Division I coach. And uh, not just a coach, but the person on staff who processes all of your recruiting emails. <laughs> I'm the person that wakes up and in my morning, on the phone, I have 35 new emails forwarded from my head coach that are also your recruiting emails, in addition to the 50 to 60 I got overnight. That's my morning. That's about 6 a.m. every day. So, that being said, um, I'm going to give you the tools, the tips, and the tricks um, because I literally spend probably three to four hours a day uh, scrolling through emails and another three hours a day watching all of your highlight videos. The first thing you want to figure out when, when you approach the recruiting process, Hodge up here made it all, all sound uh, fun and exciting and he also mentioned that it is very stressful. It is stressful. There's over 400,000 girls that are under the age of 18 playing volleyball in this country right now. And at the Division I level, there's 3,000 scholarship spots. So you have 400,000 to 3,000, okay? It's pretty obvious math. So you as a volleyball player have to be exceptional at one of two things. You have to be exceptionally skilled, or you have to have exceptional athleticism. If you have both those things, you can Google All-American. Those are your All-Americans um, at the highest level at all of our divisions. So Div 1, Div 2, Div 3, NAIA, Junior College, and Community College. Um, so, Biggest thing that I always start off with is don't choose a school just because of the division they're in. There are plenty of division schools that, you know, all these coaches up here could, could kick the snot out of, okay? And that's, that's what I have here. You guys actually have this, um, the handout that I'm going off of right now, you have this in um, the packet handout. So it's just titled, it has my name on top. Um, know, know kind of the level you want to play at, know the level that your goal is. Um, and then you are so lucky, you're in Southern California, you are saturated with the amount of college volleyball matches you can go see during the year. And get out and see every single school play at least once if you can within your first two years of high school. Go see, come see myself, uh, go see John of Loma, go down and see Kristen here um, at Miracosta, go and see everybody play live and sit courtside. Don't sit up in the nosebleeds, because as we know from the nosebleeds, the more and more I watch, the more and more people I watch football with on TV, everyone's an armchair quarterback. Everyone thinks they can play um, in the NFL, at least right now, when I watch the playoffs with people. So sit courtside so you can really see how fast and how skilled the players need to be at all the different levels playing. Get an idea. That will help you craft your email when you say, hey, came to see your team play. was really impressed. I think I can help you. That to me, I'm, I'm coming to watch you play for sure um, at your next tournament. That means a lot. That being said, you know, you don't have to go see every single one of my ma our, our matches, but that'd be nice. But, uh, you know, get out, and see, get out and see some college volleyball live. If you want to play in college, don't make it be an abstract idea. Go and see what you're going to have to do um, to play at the level you want to play at. Uh, secondly, so at the Division I level, we are a head count sport. Okay, head count sport works just like men's football, men's basketball, and women's basketball. We're the four head count, sport, head count sports in, in, uh, in athletics, in NCAA athletics at the Division I level. That means you get everything covered on scholarship. You get room and books, you get board, you get uh, meal plan, you get cost of attendance money, which, which I can touch on a little bit later. It's basically a check that they cut you and they go, here you go, here's a check for two grand. Um, you get all of that stuff covered. Um, at the Div 1 level, if you do not get offered a scholarship, you get zero. 
Okay, you get gear, you get things that are covered to be on the team, um, but you are then considered a walk-on. You get not one penny to cover your education, uh, room and board, <coughs> dining, cost of living, all that stuff. So that's important to discern because at different levels, the money side works very, very differently. Okay, so we have 12 at, uh, at, the, at the division one level. Um, where you can get money, say you don't get offered a full scholarship, there's a lot of different areas you can get money, and, and Brennan touched on it with the grades. There's a lot of money given for academics, for high level academic scores, um, GPA, um, you know, honor rolls, dean's list, that kind of stuff when you're in high school. If you're really pushing academically, you can get quite a bit of a academic money at the higher levels of institutions. So that is a huge goal for you gals. Um, don't obviously don't burn yourselves out as a student, but make sure that you're shooting for high scores, especially on the ACT and SAT. That can get you enough so if you end up being offered a preferred walk-on spot, um, you can actually help cover some of the costs of your education that way. Um, another way is just school, general school scholarships. Every university usually has a page that lists a couple scholarships that they give out for exceptional students, maybe students who are really involved in community service, um, more of the well-rounded students, and, and that's somewhere you can get money uh, as well. Okay, real quick, um, as starting the recruiting process, it's, it's important, all those rules and all those fancy terms are important to know, but the only thing you need to remember is if it's September 1st or after, uh, your junior year. I can call, text, email, Facebook, Snapchat. I can do everything with you as a recruit if it's after September 1 of your junior year. If it's before September 1 of your junior year, we have to go through a recruiting coordinator or your coach from your team to initiate contact. That's the important word, to initiate contact. So say I see you out, you're a 15 year old, I think you're a stud, I definitely want to start the recruiting process. I'm gonna call Kevin and I'm gonna go, Kevin, I really like Sally, you know, that number nine kid um, off of your 15 ones. Can you help me get in contact with her? What's the best way to go about this? And there lies the start of your recruitment with us. Um, after that, once we've identified you, um, we can start the, the communication process. So, the next phase of that is usually I would craft an email and I'm going to forward that email to Kevin and it's going to say, hi Sally, I saw you play, you did really well. Would you be interested in coming for an unofficial visit or be interested in University of San Diego? He's going to forward that to you. Okay, so I know it's a little complicated, but before September 1, we can initiate. After September 1, we can talk freely, we can text and um, it's pretty smooth in the recruiting process. Okay, what if you are on the other side of that. You're trying to get noticed. Uh, you want college coaches to come and see you. Uh, Mike mentioned it about the emails. Craft an email, send it to me. You know, I'm not kidding. I, I get a ton of emails every morning, but I do go through all of them. I, I don't uh, allow my inbox to, uh, you know that little outbox thing, that the scroller? If it, gets, if it gets smaller than like my thumbnail, I freak out. So I, I go through them all. And the first thing I look for is a video link. I may even not read your name. I'm just being honest. I look for a video link in your email and I look for your year and your position. So it's really important that you put that in the title. Year, position, okay? Because I can tell you, we already have a commitment in 2018 for a setter. So if anybody writes me and it says 2018 and setter, I immediately respond to their co uh, uh, club coach saying, thank you for your interest. Um, we already have a commitment for that year, and I move on. I don't even read the email. Um, so, again, I'm just giving you the, the nitty gritty tips and tricks. So put your year, um, put your position, and then make the video link like in the first paragraph. Like put it, hi, my name's so-and-so, I play for this club. Here's my coach contact, here's a video link of me. You know, and then put your club schedule that really helps me because then if I click your link, I really like it, the next thing I look at is your club schedule and I go, where can I see this kid next? And then the third thing I do is I pick up the phone and I call Kevin and I say, Kevin, this kid sent me a video link, I wanna know where they're at in the recruiting process, okay? And therein lies how you get noticed uh, at tournaments. So if you're on the receiving end of correspondence, um, and, and again, it's, be, it's before September 1, uh, you know, we have to, we have to kind of go after you, but if you're not, you know, and if a school hasn't sent you any emails or hasn't noticed you at any of the tournaments yet, feel free to reach out. Email those coaches directly. 
and email everybody on staff. Just put all of our emails in the top line because there's inevitably one person on staff that goes through it all. Maybe there's both, but there's a, there's a priority person that does all the filtering, and I'm that person on my staff. So it doesn't hurt you to email, um, for instance, Jen and Brent are the other coaches I work with. It doesn't hurt you to put all of our emails in, in the title line. We don't get offended by that at all. Normally, you know, we'll end up in my inbox probably, but, uh, but it, that you can just make sure that somebody sees it if you don't know who's the filter person on the staff. With video links, um, you know, they're, they're doing a great job of, of providing that. It's going to probably save you a ton of money on recruiting services. Um, you can make your video link public. Please post your video on YouTube and or Vimeo or some public video sharing site. Because the first thing you do when you email me, I look at the video link you've attached and I YouTube your name. I look for more stuff. On, or I look for your team, you know, so for instance, here I coach uh, 15 Marie, uh, and I would look for, say a kid's interested, you know, Sally, you know, Spike a lot, plays for 15 Marie. I'm gonna search her name on YouTube, and if I can't find anything under her name, I'm searching her team. I'm searching 15 Marie. If that brings up anything, and there are there are people, there are, there are people really really good at this, and you'll you'll type in a girl's name, and she'll have a ton of match video and she'll have a couple highlight videos and I just sit there and I can just watch and watch and watch okay so make your video searchable for college coaches um, let's see here so once you've established contact okay you're you've, you've done the first thing the, the, the kind of first um, part of initiating recruitment is out of the way you're kind of in the meat of recruiting send them your schedule um, follow up with college coaches via email or if you're after, if it's after September 1 of your junior year, after tournaments, follow up with them that week. Um, I try to do a good job of following up with all the recruits that, that I've gone out and seen um, within a week. So just say, hey, what were your thoughts? Um, where am I at on your depth chart? Where are we at in the time? So, so recruiting then becomes a kind of like massaging process, right? You're kind of going along your timeline and the colleges are kind of going along their timeline. And if the college is really, really interested in you, they're probably going to push um, for an unofficial visit. So visits, unofficial visits, are anytime you visit campus before your senior year starts. Okay, so after your senior year of high school starts, we're not like women's basketball, we're not caught up yet. Women's basketball can actually start official visits junior year. We're hoping to move that way. Um, but right now we have official visits, meaning we can pay for your flight or pay for your gas and pay for all your meals and, and pay for everything for you to get to campus. We can do that as soon as your senior year starts. But let's be honest, most girls get recruited before senior year and or make verbal commitments before senior year. So you're gonna wanna get on campus and make an unofficial visit and start to get to know the coaching staff and the team in person. More so the team. You wanna make sure that you like the girls, you know the girls, you feel comfortable with the girls, and your personality fits with them because coaches right now are on shorter and shorter leashes at the Division I level. They're being fired if they don't win conference quicker and quicker. They're being held to higher accountability, kind of like men's basketball when I would say nobody else, men's basketball, men's football, I compare it to. So don't choose somewhere for the coach, please. Choose somewhere that you fit scholastically, that you fit personality-wise, and that you really see yourself excelling at that level of play. Um, I don't think I have anything else right now. I'm sure you guys are gonna have a ton of questions. Um, but again, make sure during the process that you're a clear communicator. And if you have questions, you know, just ask college coaches. Where am I at on your list? Where am I at on the depth chart? You can get an, you can get an answer really easily because I can tell you, well, you're top three. Oh, you're top five. Well, we're kind of waiting till we can see you again play a little bit tougher composition. You can, you can get an idea of where you're at um, on their list, and then it just gets, it becomes kind of a um, give and take. Where we also ask kids, where are we at on your list? You know, have you narrowed down to your top ten? Have you narrowed down to your top five? Um, so it, it becomes an open dialogue, and the more open, clear, um, and just go for it. Just ask the question that's on your mind. You can get, you'll get an answer, and, and it's just so much better than trying to dance around. You know. Well, well, I, I don't really know yet, or, uh, you know, and if you get that kind of runaround from a college staff, that's not a coach you're going to want to play for, okay? You're going to want to play for a coach that 
gives you clear, honest, you know, consistent communication. And um, that being said, I think that's all I have for now. Thank you, Marie. I wanted to add a couple more things that Marie brought up for me. Um, one is that parents can't go up to colleges at tournaments and start talking to them. You can go up and you can say hello, but I've seen a lot of parents sit there and try to start having a conversation and I can see the college coach saying to themselves, I can't talk to you, but I'm trying not to be rude. So. Please remember, you can't go up, you can say hello, you can wave, and that's about it. And some of you, it's going to be weird because you're going to have gone on an unofficial visit with your daughter and spent an entire day with that person. And it's awkward not to have a friendly conversation with them. But that is an NCAA rule, that you can't talk to them unless they're seniors. seniors. I can talk to your parents. Uh, Senior I can talk year. talk to parents and seniors. Perfect. Can one more yeah. thing? I just forgot to. So the second thing I do after I YouTube your name and I try to find video on you players is I social media you. I look for your Facebook, I look for your Twitter. Just wanted to mention that. You own what you post. Can I ask a question? What's the difference between a preferred lock-on and a lock-on? No difference. It's just a fancy word to put in front fancy of you. The question was, what's the difference between a preferred walk-on and a walk-on? And there is no difference. But we have heard that term tossed around because it makes walk-on players, let's use USD for example. They could say, hey, you're a preferred walk-on, and that might make them feel a little bit more special. <laughs> well, okay. it, it's also preferred because we're not, a, um, we're not the YMCA. It's not a sign up and play kind of organization. So um, we prefer you to join our team on the roster and we actually see you providing meaning to our roster, not just, okay, you can come and play because you're interested in us. So that's where the preferred comes from. We, we, we might have offered all of our scholarships for that year, um, but there's a, there's a student athlete who's extremely interested and we think that they could fill a role in our program. And um, so yes, we prefer that person to walk on versus people who just wanna uh, yeah, hang out. <laughs> Marie and I just did a presentation in Nebraska together at the American Call Volleyball Coaching Association, so we're constantly fighting over the microphone. It's pretty fun. Um, so a couple of other things. Um, what happens if the recruiter comes by your court and you're not playing? And I know that that can be a very frustrating situation because you feel like you just lost an opportunity to shine in front of the college that you want to shine in front of. Trust me, they have been there. They understand this process. They know that just because you're not on the court at that exact time or for that match, they're not going to immediately cross you off the list. I've talked to USC and Penn State and all the other great tw top 20 programs, and they've shared with me, oh, I just looked for a kid, she wasn't on the court that bad, so I'm gonna go watch her later, or I'm gonna go find video, or I'm gonna talk to the coach, whatever it might be. But, on that same side, I have had a kid get a scholarship just because of warm-ups. And that's because the college coach was there and watching their hustle, watching their attitude, and it wasn't just because of the warm-up, but it definitely opened the door for her, and she was not a starter. So that college coach just got to see warm-ups and then watched the entire match where the kid didn't play, but that brought him into our wave gym, and that started a conversation. So know that even when you're off the court, the coaches are watching. They talk to us all the time about, I like her energy on the sidelines. I like it when she comes off the court and she's giving her teammates a slap on the butt. That's encouraging. That's the type of stuff that co um, colleges want to see. So this is for the beach side and for the indoor side. I know a big starting point is just how to create the list. So sitting down with Kevin, sitting down with Mike, that's a great place to start on how do we create this list of colleges that we're going to even email. On both the beach and the indoor side, we want you guys to CC Matt and Mike for all beach stuff, me and Kevin for all indoor stuff, because colleges will just immediately reply to us, we're on the CC, makes it super easy for us to forward on to you. Another thing that Marie said that I know can be kind of scary was that 40,000, 3,000 stat of how many players there are and how many are actually getting scholarship. 400,000, 3,000, scary, okay. Something to keep in mind is that this is like a dating website. The whole recruiting process is trying to find a boyfriend. 
Okay, you're, you're gonna get in a relationship with somebody and it needs to be mutual. And just because Marie is looking at an email that says 2018 setter and dismisses it or says thankful or kindly, hey, we already have that taken care of, that's, that's okay. That's actually very helpful to you and to us as your recruiting service so we can check them off the list and find the right boyfriend for you. So know that that's part of the whole process and not to be discouraged when you do get a no, that that's gonna happen. But we will find the right spot for you. Play for a great club, if you guys play through the entire system, I can almost guarantee you that there is a school that is going to want you by the time you're 18. And now I'm gonna pass it over to my good friend, John Scott, who's gonna bring in a very interesting perspective. While he's walking up, I'm gonna give you his quick bio. He coached at USC on the women's side, a division one program, and at the men's, and then transferred to Point Loma as the assistant coach when they were an NAIA program, then became the head coach, and they're now a Division II program. So he has a ton of insight. Sorry. Thanks, Brennan, for that awkward boyfriend analogy and then introducing me. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus in on just a couple of things um, to try to leave up a little more time for Q&A. Um, so I, I have experience at just about every level, so I'm going to kind of focus in on some of the distinctions um, and then also just kind of some, some do's and don'ts in this process. So uh, for Division Two, the contact period is actually June 15th leading up to the junior year. So for those of you girls who are sophomores right now, I would be able to initiate contact with you or your parents on June 15th. Up until that point, I or any other Division II would not be able to initiate. We would have to go through a club coach, club recruiting coordinator, <laughs> high school coach, et cetera. And then to reiterate, for Division I, that date is September 1st. So any Division I coach, Maria included, could not text you, call you, et cetera, until September 1. Even if you called them, hey, Marie, I want to play for you, call me back you're not gonna get a call back, okay? She's not allowed to, so she's gonna try to go through your club coach or whatever until it gets to that date, June 15th, September 1st. So those are a couple of really important things to note. Um, at the Division II level, the probably the main distinction is we offer partial scholarships. So for instance, it's not uncommon for me to say, hey, well, we can have you walk on your freshman year and then we can give you 25,000 a year for your last three years. And we can cut it up in all different ways. We can give you 30,000 a year every year. We can ask you to walk on for three years and hopefully you can earn some money in your fourth. That's, that's the way that it works at the Division II level. Um, it's kind of nice, it gets really messy with the numbers because the budget is constantly something very different every year, um, but that's the way that it works. We also try to combine it with academic money as much as possible. So to reiterate what's been said several times, your GPA is important. Taking those tests, SAT and ACT, very important. Don't just take one, take both, and then take both again, take it a few times. Um, a lot of schools like ourselves will super score it. So say you get a really solid math score on your SAT and a not so solid critical reading, you can study up on critical reading and focus in on that section the next time you take it, and you could keep your good math score with your good critical reading score on two separate tests, and that's, that's a really positive thing. Um, for the GPA, um, finding out if, if the school takes the weighted or the non-weighted GPA in their academic scholarship offers. Uh, Point Loma, we offer weighted, so taking an AP and getting an A will help your GPA very much. Uh, taking an honors class will not help you a lick. So that's something good to know, that it, you may, might be good for your pride to be in honors classes. If it hurts your GPA, it's probably not a wise thing if you're trying to get an academic scholarship. Um, also, and this is, the, this is the reason I'm at Point Loma, a lot of Division IIs, a lot of NAIA schools, um, we offer sometimes a more holistic approach to 
to your school experience. Um, at a lot of the top, top, top Division ones, it very much feels like a full-time job. Um, and the expectations of winning are of the utmost. Um, now, at our school, we definitely have high standards for winning, but we also keep it real. We are a Christian school, and that's something that we focus on and is important to us. We serve our community. We really focus on academics once they're in our school. It's not just something to get in. It's, all right, we want to get become even better students now that you're here. So we, we focus on a more holistic approach um, to the student athlete. Um, now, a lot of Division I coaches would do the same. Uh, but at the top level, sometimes you have to win. And that's it. And so that's something to kind of focus on in your process, especially getting to know the coaches and what their priorities are. Um, let's see. For me, what I, I, as a club coach, what I always tell, tell um, the girls that I coach, when you go on a visit, it's all about the relationship. So get to know the players, get to know the team, get to know what their personality is, what the team culture is. When you're on your visit, do they want to go to a party? Is that important to you, good or bad? When you're on your visit, are they, are they talking trash about the coach or about the girl who's not in the room? Get to know who they are and the type of people that make up that program. Do you match that culture or not? Um, I'm gonna differ with Marie here, um, partially because of the level that I'm at. Get to know your coach very, very closely in that process. At least uh, it, at the level that I'm at, getting fired for a bad season is less likely. So what I tell my club players is, parents, your girl, your daughter is going to have is going to be more influenced by her college coach for four years, even more so than you. So that's something to think about. It's not just about what's the best school she can be at. What is she going to be on TV? Is she going to be on the Pac-12 network? Is this coach going to be a good influence for four years? <clears throat> Thinking about um, in the process, looking for um, do they offer the type of degree I want? Um, do I know what type of a degree I want? That's very important. You may grow up thinking you want to go to Texas. You want to go to Texas your whole life. You say Texas, and then you find out you want to you want to be a veterinarian, and they don't have a degree that helps that. I don't know if they do, but <laughs> that's Im that's important. That's important. That's important. So think about that stuff. We all think about location. We all think about weather. We all think about distance of home. Let's really think about that. What do we want as parents, as kids? What is it that we're looking for? There's so many good options. Start to make that list. Now, a few do's and don'ts, and I'll leave, we'll try to leave as much Q&A time as possible. When you're doing your email, be sure you're saying, Dear Coach Murray, I would love to play for University of San Diego. Okay? <laughs> Don't put, Dear Coach. I would love to play for you because we know that that means we are on a blind copy mass email and I don't know about I don't know about you maybe you maybe you look into those more when I get that email I move on I flat out move on okay I want to know that you're actually contacting Point Loma so that's a very important one um, and it's got to come from the kid Girls, you got to get comfortable with this. I recruit the girl. It's very important to know the type of family that they come from. But ultimately, families, you're not going to be in practice every day. You're not going to. You're not going to be there. And so, we encourage. And as a club, as a club coach, I encourage you girls that are on the team. You got to grow up, and this is a big part of it. You got to learn how to have real conversation, and it's going to be awkward for a while. But that's kind of the point. Let's kind of grow in this process and enjoy it. Um, ask some good questions. Ask, um, if I come to your summer camp this year, Coach, are you going to be prepared to offer me a scholarship? I know some of you guys are used to going to camp and you think that that's going to be your ticket to that school. 
No, camp is usually a paycheck into the college coach's <laughs> wallet. So that's a tough question. If I come, maybe, maybe you don't have any scholarship money. Will you be prepared to offer me a walk-on spot if I do A, B, and C? Ask some tough questions. What, uh, you said you came to my tournament this weekend. Could you give me one or two things that you think I should work on? Keep it real for the coaches and you'll know if they're keeping it real with you. It's very important. Um, when it comes to videos, I like to see something very short that shows me that you're good enough for our level and that's gonna get me to watch you in person. Um, and then if I find out that I think you're good enough, then I want a big full match so I can watch and really focus in on you. But if it starts out with a two minute intro of you being awkward like I am right now, that's, that's something I'm just gonna scroll through anyway. I, the ideal video for me would be, here's 10 seconds of me absolutely hammering a couple of balls, and then here's a two minute highlight video, and then here's maybe a set that I may or may not watch. But that, that's, gonna tell, that's gonna tell me she may or may not be at my level, Time to move forward. Now, when we get to the point of watching you on the court, uh, I think as Brandon mentioned, look, you know, scholarship through hitting lines. Something I, some things that I look for are intangibles of if you're having a bad match, are you looking down on the ground and are you frustrated with yourself or are you giving good high fives to your teammates? When you're in the huddle at water break, are you saying, hey mom, I need my water? Or are you responsible for your own water? That's a big one for me. Or when uh, you shank the ball toward me and you run after it and I give it to you on the sideline, are you going to say thank you? Those are some pretty important things that we don't always think about because we're in a competitive environment. It's pretty important. Uh, the coach is watching you that entire time. If they're there to see you, they're watching you. They're not just watching you when the ball is live, especially me. I'm watching you when the ball is not live to see what type of a person you are. So those are some do's and don'ts to think about. I'm sure we'll get to a lot more in Q&A. Thank Good evening. I am Kristen Wright, and I'm the head indoor coach and beach coach at Maricosa College. And before I get into the community college, junior college thing, because I know that's what you came here for, right? To come to community college, right? That's everybody's dream? No, I'm just teasing. Some of you, you never know. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background. I played at USD, actually, um, no Toreros. I was fortunate enough to be an All-American there, I finished in 2004. I was recruited all over the country, Stanford, UCLA, and I made a really good decision by choosing a best fit scenario for me where I, I wanted to be at a place where I'd play right away. Um, and I was guided well in my club, my, my parents were good parents. so. Um, a lot of good information I'm hearing you guys are receiving tonight. Um, take it down um, and really th take the pride out of it. That's what I want to say in this process. You want it to be a place where you're going to thrive and be happy and enjoy and grow and get a degree, right, um, at the end of the day. And, um, and, and the rest will take care of itself. So. Junior college, community college, uh, I started two years ago. We started the, restarted the program at Miracosta College. Um, been quite successful there. In our first year of beach, we won a conference championship. And, um, and then this last year in indoor, we were finished seventh in the state. So it's been fun. And just like every single one of these coaches, we recruit as well, believe it or not. Uh, we want to win too, and we want, we look, like John said, I look at the players um, a lot. I watch them. I want the right culture uh, kids in our program as well. We only have so many spots. And so um, I think that's really good feedback to um, take into consideration that um, for the coaches, it's a job. They're getting paid for it. For the, for the students, this is their life, right? So you want to be happy. So there's, it's, it's a little bit of a matching game as 
Brennan pointed out. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go with Marie here. There's one in 82 kids that will play D1 volleyball. There's one in 16 kids that will play in college off of a varsity team nationally via statistics, okay? At Way Volleyball Club, I've seen it and it's been around those, you a lot of the numbers, so we're gonna do well here. Um, yeah, um, so with those numbers, it, that's not to give you fear, it's just to give to be realistic about what you're going into and that coaches are not going to come knocking down your doors. You need to do your job and you need to do it diligently and you need to make your name be known. So get your name out there and do the work. You're so lucky you have these coordinators in, in, your, in each of the sports. Um, as they said, that's, that's rare. Take advantage of that. And I hope you call um, Mr. Kevin at 10.30 at night. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Um, so just, just what the type of student athletes that we get are um, um, typically um, talented. We're looking for talent, of course, um, but not, not everybody gets to go. And so, so it could be grades, it could be um, one of the parents at home has a, has a health issue and they need to be at home. Their circumstances, they didn't have enough course credits to be um, cleared through the clearinghouse. Um, time to mature, so they're what we call the quote-unquote late bloomer, and we see their potential and we want to develop them. Um, lots of different reasons to play community college volleyball. One of the biggest is you're investing all this time into club and, and, your, and money and time, and then um, it doesn't work out. It, it's We're the next step of hope, right? And being that we are educated, and I am involved with all of the college coaches because our job, if we're doing it right, is to get our kids to a place where they can thrive for the next two years, and hopefully that's paid in full. So we have eight, this is our first class through, we have eight, and we have, we're looking to get seven out of the eight committed on scholarship in the next couple of months, flying around, we've had several offers, and so we're very proud of that. <clears throat> We also offer beach volleyball, as I had mentioned, and that's such a huge, thriving sport. Take advantage of it. Um, try it. I encourage you guys to, um, to look out, to look into that avenue because there's, there is money there. There's not a lot, but it's growing, and it, um, you know, it could work your way into an institution through admissions. Um, just to point out, um, Miracosta College is part of the 3C2A um, in California. There's National Junior College um, Athletic Association. So in total, there's 398 schools that are two-year schools. And the NJCAA are two-year schools, and they do offer a little bit of money. Um, AAA, trip, our school systems do not offer athletic scholarships, only academic and um, partial scholarships. Um, so we have a lot of FAFSA qualifiers. Um, one statistic I'll throw out, I won't be too long, but <clears throat> you look at GEs at some of these schools that let's say you, you get down to the recruiting process and you don't have any offers. Um, let's say there's a few of you out there and you're looking at, well man, do I quit, do I not? And you just, you still love the game and that's where we fall into play. Because if you go into, if, even if you walk on, they're not giving you money, you're looking at a minimum of 8000 to 40000 on the high end a year, whereas at our school you're paying $46 a unit if you're in state. You're saving a lot of money, a lot of money. And so um, think about it from a financial standpoint. Um, of course, the history will take a look into the program itself. Um, if the coach is doing a good job of getting their, their players and helping them get to um, an institution on scholarship, that's what you want to look for if you're looking at the community, community college route. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm sure other quick Q&As will come up in the, in if, if you have any questions, but um, don't forget that there is hope in community college. It's, we have a waiver from last year, a great player who's going to, I know she'll get a scholarship. Um, just, is, it's a timing thing. So, thank you. All right, well now we're gonna open up for Q&A.